I've made videos about quite a few Azul mini PC devices at this point, so let's go ahead and just cut right to the chase. Today we're going to be taking a look at the brand new Azul Access Plus, their latest PC stick. As you can see from the box, fanless Windows 10 mini PC stick, and the biggest differences between this one and the previous ones I've looked at, this one's actually got four gigs of built-in RAM, whereas the previous ones had two. It still has 32 gigs of storage in Windows 10, this one also has the Cherry Trail Z8300 processor, which should make it significantly faster and still a very small form factor. Inside of the box, you get the standard quick guide and customer service information, HDMI extension cable, very handy, micro USB power brick, wall wart, which if you can see it there does five volts at three amps. It's got a bigger processor, it's gonna need a little more power, and the PC stick itself. You can hopefully tell from the camera there, it does still have the same pattern all the previous ones did. I'm a very big fan of that pattern, with a big warning label on the back basically saying this has a quad core cherry trail processor in it it's gonna get pretty warm so do keep that in mind but i'm gonna go ahead and peel this off in terms of the rest of the layout of course you've got your hdmi port here on the end you'll plug this into your tv or monitor on the side you have the power button a micro usb for power usb 3 and usb 2 here on the back there's a three and a half millimeter headphone jack kensington lock and an ethernet port and i haven't seen anything that references gigabit so i'm going to assume that that's 10 100 and then on the other side the micro sd card slot now i will say the form factor of this if you can tell it's it's a little bit bigger than the previous ones we've looked at you might actually want to go ahead and use this little adapter because putting this directly into your hdmi port it might put a quite a bit of a strain on it. Maybe figure out some way to rig it up to the back of the device. Unfortunately, there's no visa mounts or anything on this, so there's not gonna be a way to, to easily attach it to your monitor or to your TV or anything, but you could probably rig up something with Velcro, I'm certain. I've got some industrial Velcro that might work really well with this. And of course, the last thing I completely forgot to mention there, you've got your wireless antenna. So if you want to, you can use this with just the USB for power, HDMI for video, and then Wi-Fi for everything else. And this does have the traditional Bluetooth and Wi-Fi built into it, so like I said, everything can be wireless except for power and video. And without any further ado, let's go ahead, hook this up, and see how well it works. Four gigs of RAM should make a pretty significant difference on this little guy. All right, I've gone ahead and hooked the PC stick up. We've booted it up, and we're here in the initial setup process. So I'm going to go ahead and walk through this very quickly. If you've never set up Windows before, it's fairly straightforward. Basically, just tell it where you are, who you are, sign in if you have a Microsoft account, create one if you don't, and it'll pull down any information it has about you and whatnot. So I'll be right back once I've done that. And we're back. This is the default desktop. This is what you would probably expect to see once you've logged into almost any Windows 10 machine. Let's go ahead and just take a look and see what comes pre-installed on this. If it's anything like the other Azul mini sticks that I've taken a look at, it doesn't come with a whole lot. Just the standard Windows programs, which I kind of prefer. So of course, like I said, you've got all those standard Windows programs that are pre-installed. You've got a couple of links there for Git Office and Git Skype. A couple of those are apps that you can download, but you're not going to get free copies of anything with this. Just the copy of Windows 10, of course. More Microsoft apps, more just pre-installed apps, but that's the beauty of this. It's Windows 10, so you can technically install whatever you want on it as long as there's space. But there's no bloatware pre-install, which is lovely. Speaking of space, though, if we go ahead and open this up, go to this PC, you can see the Windows, the C drive, currently has 14.1 gigs of free out of 28.2, so half the storage space is taken up right now. Part of that is that I went ahead and downloaded a copy of PC Mark. that's 300 megs that it took up, and I wanted to go ahead and show this before I do the installation, because it's going to lose a lot of this space now to the benchmark, but we'll get back to that. As you can also see, I've got a USB stick installed right here, as well as an SD card, so all of the storage appears to be working appropriately. Let's just go ahead and take a look in here. This is just a card I pulled out of a quadcopter I was testing. So you got all the pictures on here. Yep, that's a picture. So it's able to read from it, from the videos. Yep, there's videos on here. Don't know if it'll actually play or not. It's thinking about it. Yeah, it's playing. So this is the video from one of the, the mini quadcopters that I tested. It's not ultra high quality video or anything. In terms of the speed, just out of curiosity, we'll drag this over to the desktop. And that's going decently fast. It was saying about 70 megabytes per second. In terms of the actual PC specs, let's go into the system properties. You can see in here we have the Atom X5Z8300 CPU at 1.44 gigahertz. 4 gigs of system RAM, very nice to see that there. Just a little unfortunate to only have 32 gigs of storage, but again, you do have the micro SD card slot as well as two USB ports you can technically use. This is currently running at 1080p as you can see, so a little bit of the performance may be impacted by that if I were running at 4K, for example, which by the way, I'll go ahead and test that and include a clip of that right here. And at this point, I've got it hooked up directly to the TV. You can probably see there it has defaulted itself to be 300%, but if you go down to the advanced display settings, 
it did actually default itself to 3840 by 2160 so this is running at 4K at the moment. So it is possible and it's actually running through the included HDMI extender cable as well. Looking into the Intel graphics control panel you can see here again 3840 by 2160 so it is running at 4K but it's running at 29 hertz and it does not look like 60 hertz is an option. I do have the HDMI set to HDMI 2.0 and I changed to 30 hertz and that does appear to be working, but 60 hertz is not an option. So if you're looking for something to do 4K 60, this may not do it. But anyway, I think what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and install this benchmark. We'll see how it runs, see what the benchmarks are and everything, and then wrap things up. It's basically just, it's Windows 10. It's on a relatively small form factor. What more is there to say about it? So we'll be right back. And we are back. It's actually the next day. I had a bit of an issue getting PC Mark to run appropriately, but as you can see, I have run PC Mark 8, and actually just comparing it versus the last item that I looked at from Azul, the score is actually almost identical. The one I looked at previously, the larger device, was about 1187. This is 1138, and that a large part of that could just be due to needing to run it again, and it's it's such a minor difference that this is definitely a very impressive score for what it is. You can see here it's better than 5% of all the results, so this is not a high-end gaming machine or anything. It's kind of close to a 2013 Office PC, but this is something that fits in the palm of your hand. And actually, just for a little bit of fun, I decided to go ahead and install Minecraft, the two different ways you can on Windows 10. So I have the official one from Mojang, and then the Windows 10 Beta Edition. And I tested them out briefly, and we'll just go ahead and say it. The one from Mojang, the, the Minecraft official launcher version 1.11, it's not great. It's not hugely impressive, but for what it is, for the size of PC this is, and the price that it costs, the performance is not as bad as you might expect. Especially if you're willing to go in and turn down some of the graphic settings, this is running at 1080p, and here's the game. I've just created a quick survival world, done nothing in it, and it's definitely not the fastest thing in the world to start up or to play, but there you go, we're in the game now. We go into the options and the video settings. You can see I've got this turned down to fast and minimum smooth lighting. I can actually turn the V-Sync off if I want. Clouds are set to fast. So, you know, if you're willing to turn things down, set the frame rates down, set the render distance down, come back out and just fly around a little, it's actually performing a little worse than it was earlier, but still getting the job done. It's still loading up some of the world. But you see we're flying around. We're still seeing everything. Some of the chunks are taking time to load in. So this is not the optimal experience. And now switching over to the Windows 10 Beta Edition. If we go ahead and play, I'll just click on this world. I haven't spent a whole lot of time in this version of the game before, but it's definitely a lot better performer than the Java version. So I'm here in a world I've just created a few minutes ago. And you can see the chunks are loading off in the distance there. It's a little sluggish whenever I go to a spot where it's, it's loading chunks, but if I hop up here and fly around a little bit, you can see really far into the distance there. We'll take off and just start flying towards the southern biome. So much smoother, so much better. I've actually seen some pretty low-end PCs that can do a really good job with this, so can't say that I'm hugely surprised, but... Yeah, this is, this is definitely the experience you would want. The only thing different here is you can't do all the mods. Well, it's just, it's essentially like the mobile edition. So either way, if you want to play Minecraft on a PC like this, it's definitely possible. Just keep in mind, you're probably going to be playing the mobile version of it. And to go ahead and wrap things up, basically, in terms of just everyday usage and performance, if you're using the built-in Microsoft Edge browser and you're keeping things kind of limited, you know, a little bit of office-type work and email and very light gaming, things like some of the, the runner games or like you saw there, Minecraft on the, the Windows 10 Beta Edition, you're going to be all right with this because it has a pretty decently powerful processor and 4 gigs of RAM. Definitely go with the 4 gigs of RAM version on any of these Azul PCs. The biggest downside with this, as you can see, the hard drive is pretty much full already. You can always supplement this space with USB drives as well as micro SD cards, but there are still going to be some apps that want to be installed to the C drive. They're going to perform better on there. So if you can, definitely try to get one of these with the 64 gigs of storage. If Azul ever decides to do one with 128 or 256, that would be even better, but it's probably going to make the device a little larger. But I would say try to avoid the 32 gig version because you will run out of space immediately. Literally all I've done to this is install PC Mark, Minecraft, and the Minecraft Minecraft Windows 10 beta, and I'm almost out of space already. And that's actually where I'm gonna wrap things up for today. So all in all, a pretty impressive PC, just needs a little more storage space. Links to where you can find this will be available down in the description. Make sure to hit that thumbs up button down below if you like this video. Subscribe to my channel to receive all the videos that I make as soon as they become available, and I will see you again next time.